In this video, I'm going to show you how to use AGGrid inside your JavaScript application without using any framework. After we have AGGrid inside the application, I'll then go through all the core features you'll need to know about AGGrid to get you going on your way. Here we have an HTML and JavaScript file. In the HTML, we have a div with an ID of my grid. This div is going to host our data grid. This here, we are importing the AG Grid Community Bundle file, and then this is importing our main.js where we will write our application code. Inside our application code, we will create a grid options object. This will host all of the properties that we will be passing into AG Grid. We'll get a reference to the hosting div using a query selector, and then create a new instance of AG Grid passing in the hosting div and the grid options. Now every grid needs rows and columns, so I'm going to paste these into the grid options. The row data are the rows we are going to display, and the column defs are the columns used to display those rows. Then finally, we're going to add style to the grid using the provided AG theme quartz, more about themes later, and we're going to give the grid a height of 500px. Okay, that should be enough. Hit save, bring up a browser, and voila, here is our simple AG grid instance. The columns can be moved, some sorting is working, very nice. Okay, that's us set up. I'm now going to go through the core features that you're going to need to know to start using AG Grid. We are mapping values using the field attribute inside our columns. Here we can see field make maps to the make attribute of our row data. And likewise, we have columns with fields model, price, and electric. The header names for the columns will be created by the grid, assuming our fields are camel case. So here the field is make, then the grid will create a header name make. Now, if a field was called car make, again using camel case, then the grid will reverse engineer that and use the words car make. You don't have to use the default header name. You can specify one explicitly using header name. Here I'll specify the header name should be company. So far, we've used field to map values. However, you can also use callback functions called value getters. Here I'm going to create a value getter that combines the make and price attributes. Value getters are useful when the value doesn't map to a particular field in your row data, or you want to do some kind of expression on the data, for example, a total column, which would add values across different columns. Now this example does have simple data, so we don't need value getters and header names, so we're going to go back to just using field make in the first column. If you want to do text formatting to values inside your cells, then you use a value formatter. Here we will add a value formatter to the price column so that we can put in a pound sign and do some formatting to local string. You can customize pretty much every part of the grid using components. Here I'm going to create a component called my cell component that displays a button and the cell's value. So this here is the component. We can see the button with an action and then we display the value which is passed in as a prop to the component. I will then configure the make column to use this component for its cell. You can now see that the make column does indeed have a button displayed beside its value. I can then click on this button to execute the click action. You can put whatever you want into the cells of the grid, whether it be buttons, images, hyperlinks, whatever you want. As long as you can put it into one of your components, then it can go into the grid's cells. Columns can be resized by dragging the resize handle on each of the column's headers. If you want the columns to be flexed, then set a flex value onto the column definitions. Here we have flex of two on the first column and one on all other columns, making the first column twice as wide as all others. Now to reduce the code size, I'm going to introduce a default column definition. The default column definition sets defaults for all columns. So by setting flex one here will result in all columns getting flex one. Or in other words, all columns will be flexed to fit the grid's width and all columns will end up the same size. A column's filter is enabled by setting filter to true on the column definition. Setting filter to true on the default column definition will enable filters for all columns. Filters are accessed by clicking the filter button on the column's headers. On the make column, the grid provides a text filter. The grid inspected the data and saw that we had text values and therefore it selected the text filter for this column. The drop down options here have contains, does not contain, equals, does not equal, etc. Options that make sense for text filtering. Then on the price column, the grid provides a number filter with values equals, does not equal, greater than, greater than or equal to, etc. Again, operations that make sense for a number of values. 
So for the last column, we have booleans, so a boolean filter is provided. In total, AG Grid comes with five filters. You can also build your own filter using components, similar to how we provided components for customizing cells. Setting floating filter to true will provide floating filters, where the filter will appear just below the header for quick access. To make cells editable for a column, you set the editable column property. Here we'll set it on the default column def so that all columns are editable. The default editing is text editing, and that's what we're doing here. Now we will configure the make column to use the select cell editor, which takes a list of values to select from. The grid comes with many editors out of the box, or you can build your own editors using custom components. Row selection can be set to single row selection or multiple row selection using the grid property row selection. Here I'll set it to multiple. I'll then click on one row to select it and then shift click to select a range of rows. To introduce checkbox selection, we will add checkbox selection to the column that we want the checkbox to appear in. For pagination, we are going to need some more data, so let me paste in 30 odd rows here. Okay, lots of data in our grid, cool. We enable pagination with the grid property pagination, and then we have the option to configure it further. Here I'll set a page size to 10, and have page size selection set to 10 and 20. Okay, so here we can see that our pagination is working with a page size of 10, cool, and also the page size selector is using 10 and 20, perfect. The quartz theme is one of the many themes that comes with the grid. The theme is applied to the grid by setting the CSS class in here. All the provided themes come in a dark mode. The dark mode is selected by setting the relevant CSS class. Another of the themes you provide is a material theme. To get that, apply the relevant CSS class. And again, all of the provided themes have a dark mode. Here is the material dark theme. A theme is optional. You can take it out and have your grid with no theme. This then gives you 100% control over the style of the grid. Some people think you need a headless grid to achieve this, but that is not true. With AG Grid, the theme is optional. You can style it all from scratch yourself if you want to. Now, creating your own theme from scratch will take a long time. I don't recommend it. I recommend that you'd pick one of our themes and then customize it using CSS variables. To show that, I'm going to set this grid back to using the Quartz theme. And now I'm going to go into the project CSS file and change some of the CSS properties for the Quartz theme. I'm going to change some of the colors that the grid's using. Now, I'm not a style person, so if horrible style offends you, then you're better off looking away now. The first thing I'm going to change is the font color, which is the foreground color, and I'm going to pick a shade of green. Then I'll change the background and go for a shade of kind of tealy blue. I'll then go for the headers and make them an even worse color of tealy blue. And then finally, I'm going to choose a purple color for the row hover. Horrible colors, but it demonstrates using CSS variables to change the look and feel. Now there's loads of things that you can change. Colors is just one. You can change the font, the padding, the row height. Basically, if you want to change it, there is a variable there for you. You can change the style of cells and rows based on the values inside the grid. For example, you can highlight a row or a cell if a value is too high or low. To do that, you use cell class rules and row class rules. Let's look at cell class rules first. I'll put a cell class rule into the price column. This cell class rule says apply the CSS class green cell when the value is greater than 30,000. And for this to have an effect, we add a green cell CSS class in our CSS file. Now we can see that all prices that are above 30,000 are indeed highlighted in green. Then if you wanted to highlight some rows, you do that using row class rules. This row class rule says apply the CSS class red row when the make is Toyota. And then we set this using the grid property row class rule. Cell class rules are set via column definitions because they are relevant to a particular column and row class rules are set via a grid property as they are not specific to a particular column. And then finally, we create the red row CSS class. 
and there we go. We can see that all of the roads with Toyota are indeed highlighted now in red. And that's it. That's what you need to know to get going using AG Grid in your application. If you like this video, then please give me a thumbs up, add a comment and share. Thank you.